Good afternoon, everyone. We are here today to celebrate Bob Griffith's life. We will celebrate him in word and in prayer and in liturgy and, yes, song. He loved music and excelled at music. And so this service will be filled with On behalf of the Hillcrest community, we are here for you during this difficult time. May God just surround you with his presence, healing and fond memories of your husband until the two of you meet again. Let's begin worship with our words of grace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes shall stumble and fall. Though a host stand against me, my heart shall not fear. Though the Lord rise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that will I seek after. That I 
may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of the Lord's temple. Noon. Robert Lewis Griffith was born March 22, 1933, in Bourbon, Illinois, to Luther Duane and Harriet Griffith. Shortly after he was born, they moved to Minnesota, and like me, and he has lived here ever since. Bob married Patricia Hickok on August 11, 1961, and like me, was blessed with three daughters, Deborah, Julie, and Kristen, and grandchildren, Alexa and Miranda, and I understand that all of them are here to remember and honor Bob. Bob and Pat have always lived in Bloomington, and when the girls were young, they started tent camping with a nice four-person tent and traveled all over the United States and Canada. When Julie graduated from medical school, all five traveled to Europe and did the grand tour. Travel and cruising have always been a big part of Bob and Pat's life for a very long time. Even when it seemed that each cruise ended with one or the other being injured. <laughs> Bob was a chemical engineer for 3M for 37 years. Singing has always been a part of Bob's life. Bob always sang in the church choir, and one night at Hillcrest, men from the Bloomington Chorus invited them to come to see how barber shoppers have fun. Bob, Mike Stump, and Merrill Miller joined and formed a quartet by adding a bass. Then they went through the Commodores and more quartets. Then they joined the Knights of Harmony, where they went through nine basses before settling on Jim Richard and formed Grandma's Bows. Pat always was looking for some place to store all the different outfits and uniforms and shirts. Grandma's foes then headed for midwinter in Hawaii in 1989, and they came in second place. So they came back and they worked. Next year, they took first place. That honor meant that they were busy with lots of shows. Bob also sang with the Great Northern Union and always had tickets for their shows, which were always great. Bob spent 57 years as a member of the Barbershop Society. I was fortunate to be able to sing alongside of Bob, and I always felt very fortunate to stand next to him because his voice was so rich and always in tune, and I could always find my notes from his. Obviously, I'm not in the same range as he is. <laughs> when I do Masonic memorial services, I paraphrase a poem which I fit, see, fits today. It is though we're standing on the shore of a mighty ocean, a ship by our side spreads its white sails and moves toward the horizon. And just as it hangs as a spike of white cloud where the sky meets the sea, someone says, there, it is gone. Gone? Gone where? Gone from our sight, that is all. Thus it is with Bob. He has met the challenges of the sea of life. He has gained that eternal horizon. Now, this, at this point, I normally stop that 
home. But a minister once reminded me that there is a second part to that poem. The second part starts out, just the moment when someone says, there it is gone, there are other eyes watching her coming, and other voices ready to take up the glad shout, here she comes. I could just imagine Bob approaching those shores which is crowded with family and friends and barber shoppers, ready to welcome Bob to that house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, <coughs> and encouraging him to join God's barber shop choir. Let us all remember, keep the whole world singing. Good day. It's my honor and privilege to be here to remember Bob. I'm Pastor Candace Savilar. I am the chaplain at the Minnesota Masonic Home, where Pat and Bob live and have lived for a while. I'd like to share a scripture for you from 2 Corinthians. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. The words of God for the people of God. As the chaplain at the Masonic Home, it has been my pleasure to know and to serve Pat and Bob. They came to our independent living cluster homes in 2008, and they moved from the cluster homes into what we call the big house, into assisted living in 2021, February. They enjoyed their time at the Masonic home, and when you move there, you become part of the Masonic family. Just like for those of you who are at Hillcrest, you're part of the Hillcrest family. So there is so much love being sent to you, Pat, today from residents and from staff and from volunteers who also loved Bob. Pat still remains with us and lives in our assisted living apartment. Bob was in our transitional care unit, we call it the TCU, at the end of his life. He and Pat both realized that we are all wasting away day by day. However, the good news is that our ailments and our troubles are temporary. We may not see them as light and momentary as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians. Although we give thanks today that Bob has had his eternal healing and that he is in the presence of God right now that he has been made whole and perfect, and that he's waiting until we all come and join him again. They are people of faith, Pat and Bob, and they knew that when Bob took his last breath, he was going home to be with God. And Pat knows that she will join him one day. They are people of faith and have been part of this Hillcrest family for over 58 years. Bob sang here in this choir, and I am sure he is just watching down on us and going to love the singing and the music today, this service. My prayers are here that God will grace us and will envelop us as we find a peace of heart and a peace of mind. I also pray that this congregation is blessed with the presence of your new pastor, Pastor Eric Pond, be with him and welcome him as he brings the gospel and the good word to you. Pat, may God be with you this day and always.
Pat, I want to extend to you sympathy uh, and your family and your friends gathered today. Uh, it is a great honor and privilege to be here. Uh, my scripture readings will be all from the Psalms, very brief uh, scripture readings. I don't know if you've known this, barbershoppers and other uh, people that like to sing, that uh, the psalmist, whenever we sing, uh, gets to chuckle because we talk about singing the old songs. And of course, the psalmist songs are about 2,500 years old. So uh, how are we doing, boys? Are we, uh, are we singing the old songs? So it's a, great, uh, it's a great day to share some words from the psalm. And I've selected just portions of some verses that I think pertain to our time. Psalm 81. Sing aloud to God our strength. Raise a song. I hear a voice I had not known. From Psalm 5. Give ear. Listen to the sound. You hear my voice. From Psalm 40, put a new song in my mouth. And from Psalm 67, be glad and sing for joy. Sing aloud to God. Raise a song. I first heard and met Bob uh, some decades ago when he was in a quartet that sang on the annual show of the first chapter I belonged to. Uh, it was then and then, uh, way up to most recently, I had a chance to substitute in a quartet he was singing in a couple of times. And it was the delight, Pat, to be able to do that. And we had such a good time. Well, uh, the song that we would sing would kind of describe what the psalmist would say. Sing aloud. Sing aloud for our strength. We may all, all say that it was to God, but I think for many of us, it's an opportunity to raise a song and hear a voice and voices that we had not known before. The psalmist also said, give ear, listen. I know there are other directors uh, in the uh, group, but Paul, I'll just say to you, uh, 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 once or twice or a hundred times, we've heard people say, listen louder than you sing, right? But we're not very good at that. We tend to <laughs> sing a little louder than we listen. But boy, our last conversation, which it was a joy to listen to, was when Bob and I talked on the telephone. Ever so briefly, but I remember the conversation started with his gratitude for calling him, and it was completed with gratitude. It was cut short because he had tasks to do. It was an OT person ready to go, a PT person ready to go, or some kind of T that was there to help him. So, so he, uh, he concluded that and said, I have to go. But again, thank you so much for calling me. And again, Pat, it was such a delightful, uh, short but significant conversation for us to have as a last conversation. Third, we have so many of you knew Bob and so much longer and better than I did. I've really only gotten to know him in the recent, recent years. But I, I think the psalmist was clear on what Bob would say. Put a new song in my mouth. Uh, tremendous ability to want to sing and wherever he could sing and not afraid to take on new songs and was a joy to be able to that, do that. And so we think along with the psalmist. Put a new song in my mouth. And I still think the psalmist uh, could Bob could speak to the psalmist, would say this directly as the psalms conclude. Be glad. Sing for joy. Be glad. Sing for joy. Ah, yes. Thank you, Bob. God's blessings to you, Pat, family and friends, and thanks be to God and bless the memory of Bob. First piece of music will be the Lord's Prayer performed by Lance Johnson.
I've had the pleasure of knowing Bob for many years, even before I knew Pat. And when I came down to Minneapolis in the 1950s, I came from Ashland, Wisconsin, I joined Joyce Methodist Church. They had a group there called the Young Adults, and so I joined that, and Bob was there. Oh, he's such a friendly person, very shy, but we had a good time. Then when I joined here at Hillcrest, I was very happy to see Bob and Pat here. So you know with his amazing voice, he's singing up in the great heavenly choir right now. Here at Hillcrest, we had a group called Lord's Glee. We'd meet every Thursday morning at seven o'clock at a restaurant. And during our many years of going, Pat included, Five restaurants closed on us. <laughs> so that, that was kind of bad. My husband said, take on Perkins. And so we did, and we went to the Perkins on Normandale, and they closed on us. <laughs> so, but um, it was a good group of women, and we loved it. And uh, one of the amazing women that was there was Helen Belmont, and she wrote lovely poems. So we all decided at the beginning of every meeting, we would read Helen's poem called My Prayer. And Pat has asked me to read the entire poem now, but we were able to celebrate Helen's 100th birthday. She was amazing. This is my prayer. <clears throat> Give me strength, O Christ my Savior. Give me strength to face the day. Give me courage, understanding, as I travel life's highway. Give me wisdom, make me joyous. May I ever thoughtful be of another person's troubles from my side, who oh, do not flee. For I need thee, oh I need thee, every hour of every day. Hear my supplication, Father. Hear me now, O oh Lord, I pray. Give me faith that knows no limits. Give me faith to set me free from the trials and temptations that so often harass me. Help me, Lord, to pray more often. May your majesty hold sway. Help me cope with all life's problems. Guide me each and every day. Give me grace, O loving spirit. Help me, Lord, to do thy will. Bless me, God, and make me humble while I listen patient still.
reading from 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, but the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us victory through Lord Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world and know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such a faith that by day and by night, at all times and in all places, we may without fear commit ourselves and those dear to us to your never failing love in this life and in the life to come. Lord, we sin, Bob, back. We send his energy back to you where he will be in peace and grace for all eternity with you. Lord, we are sad to see him go. We are sad that we won't hear the voice here, but we're so glad now that that beautiful voice is home praising you day and night. Lord, we ask for your presence with the family as they grieve. But also, Lord, please send memories that are sweet and pure and loving to the family. Mighty God, be with all of us. In the name of the risen Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. Before our pastor Jerry comes up to say our benediction, and before we enjoy the music, of the Minneapolis Commodores. Just want to let everyone know that there'll be a booth reception in our fellowship hall. It's just out through the sanctuary around the hall after service. We would be very happy to have you there. As our service comes to a close today, we can rest assured that our wonderful companion in this life, Bob Griffith, is enjoying another life now. This morning at our men's breakfast, we missed him, but uh, just perhaps he was having his blueberry pancakes with the Lord this morning. We were left here in this world and we really need our Lord's blessing. So please, close your eyes for a moment and begin to feel that wonderful hug that your Lord God is giving you in his blessing. May he, who is able to keep you from faltering and stumbling, and will introduce you into his glorious presence, faultless and with great joy. May he bless each one of you today. Glory be to him in power, majesty, and authority. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, before the ages, now, and forever. Go in peace. Amen.
And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It burned my heart in love and broke my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Sometimes my path seems green without a ray of cheer, and then a cloud of dark behind the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus, let him tell all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my own.
singers and a lot of singers of all kinds in, in the audience today. So we're going to leave you with a, uh, an old time hymn that has uh, a little chorus to it, a couple lines that uh, you probably will know. And if you don't, you listen to us sing it the first time and make sure you get it the second time. <laughs> I expect to hear some serious singing over in this corner. <laughs> Leaning on the everlasting arm. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. sanctuary because this is the place where Bob excelled. We wanted to send him off right. So grace and peace be extended to the family. Grace and peace be extended to all of you. Go in peace. Serve